first of all, thank you everybody so much for joining us tonight. Um, just to briefly uh, do a couple housekeeping things before we do some introductions. We did just want to let everybody know that we are going to be recording this session so that anybody who wasn't able to join tonight will still be able to view it later. Um, and we're also going to be doing a live question and answer as well. So if you do have any questions um, as we're going through the session, please feel free to use the Q&A and we're going to be more than happy to answer anything that we can. Um, so, so we can jump right into things. Um, basically, we're just going to go through a few quick things, and then we're going to get into the exciting part of asking all the questions. Um, so just to introduce myself quickly, my name is Amanda Barrage. I am one of the senior assistant directors of transfer admissions here at UMass Amherst. Um, so I may have worked with some of you throughout your process um, as you've started uh, the application and transfer process. Um, but yeah, so tonight we're going to be answering some of your questions live with some current transfer students at UMass Amherst, and also giving you a little preview of some of your next steps as well as your, um, as now that you were admitted and kind of going through the rest of the steps. All right, so first of all, we just wanted to say congratulations. Um, everyone who's here tonight has already been admitted. And so we're so, so happy um, that you've made it this far with us and that you're interested in UMass Amherst. We're so excited to potentially having you join our community. Um, UMass Amherst is an awesome place. And so we just wanted to say congrats um, and we're very excited to go through this whole experience with you. All right, so we'll shortly jump into things, um, but I did just want to give you a sense of everyone who's in the room with us tonight. Um, so we'll just go over everybody quickly, and then they're going to do a little bit more of an in-depth introduction as well. So um, again, my name is Amanda. I'm going to be kind of the MC of the evening, kind of helping with all the questions. Um, and so with us today, we have a current transfer student, um, Phil, who will introduce himself in just a moment. We also have Felix, who's going to be introducing himself in just a minute as well. And then we have Mackenzie, too, um, with the awesome string lights behind her. Gotta love those. Um, and so they will all do some thorough introductions. And then I also wanted to introduce um, Rosalie Skinnell, who is another one of the transfer admissions staff. Um, she's a very knowledgeable source of information. And so she'll be here tonight to kind of help answer any of the admissions-based questions um, and anything from the, uh, the more practical side of the house, so to speak. Um, and so with that being said, we're going to jump into their more thorough introductions and then jump into the question and answers. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen briefly. Oh, I can introduce, I'll just introduce myself. So hi guys, uh, my name is Phil. Um, I am a fifth year student here this year. So I got, uh, it's about a month and two days until I graduate. So it's very scary, very, very exciting. Uh, I am from Princeton, Massachusetts, which is a pretty small town in central Mass. Uh, if anyone knows Mount Wachusett ski area, that is Princeton. So I'm like five minutes from the mountains, about an hour drive away from school. Uh, I'm a geography major. I have a human geography concentration and I have an education minor. Uh, I am a transfer student like Felix and Mackenzie. Uh, I came here the spring semester of my freshman year. Uh, I was at a very small state school in Massachusetts and I went home a lot. I didn't like it there. It was very small. Uh, not really anything happened on the weekend. So it didn't feel like school and college to me. Uh, I spent a lot of time with my parents, which I <laughs> did not want. Uh, they didn't want that either. I guess I annoyed them too much. Um, I have a couple of different jobs within admissions. I work as a, an admissions fellow. Uh, so I work closely with like kind of the admissions staff and then also the tour guide team. I also work as a tour guide. And then I also work as a transfer student ambassador. So I get in contact with per, uh, prospective transfer students like you guys and help you make the decision to come to UMass. I'm also part of the geography club. So we look at maps. We talk about geopolitical uh, you know, events going on in the world right now, uh, conservation efforts, environmental action, things like that. Uh, and I'm also part of the outing club. So we take cool trips around rest, Western Mass, hiking, kayaking, rock climbing, really anything outdoors will do it. And then sort of on the club tennis team, I'm on the B team. I'm not good at tennis. Uh, well, I'm not good enough at tennis to actually make the real team. So I get kicked off to the side and I really never play. So it's not ideal, uh, but it's sometimes fun. Uh, so yeah, that's what I do. Um, I'll pass it on to Felix to introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you guys. My name is Felix. Um, I'm currently a first year's master's student at UMass Amherst studying for a master's in public health and epidemiology. So I just graduated last semester. So I'm a little sad, but also happy uh, because I'm done with my bachelor's, but now I have to struggle for another year for my master's. So that's a little bit of a bittersweet moment. But um, I'm here today because I'm also a transfer student and I'm uh, working in the admissions 
uh, office as an admissions diversity fellow. So I'm working um, with the admissions office to try and uh, increase recruitment of underrepresented minority students and help support them throughout their time here at UMass Amherst. Um, outside of working and uh, academics, I'm part of the uh, UMass Archery Club. So I will be vice president next year. Yay, that's exciting. I love archery. So it's really fun to uh, be a part of that here on UMass campus. And on top of that, I'm also the co-captain for the UMass Altitude Five Dirty Dance Crew. So we're a hip hop dance crew. I like to dance a lot as well. So that's just kind of the stuff I do on the side. Um, and as well, I've just recently started a position as a research assistant here at UMass Amherst. So I'm enjoying a lot of that. But yeah, without further ado, I'll pass it on to Mackenzie. Hi everyone, um, congrats on being admitted to UMass Amherst. Um, a little bit about me is I am a junior. Um, I'm a psychology major and I recently added education as a double major. Um, so that's really exciting. I'm a transfer student. I transferred here um, in the beginning of the fall of my sophomore year. So I've been here for almost two years now. Um, a little bit about me on campus is I am the chair of outreach and development in our student government association. And I'm also a tour guide with Phil, which is really fun. And I'm, I don't know if I said I'm from Worcester, Massachusetts. Hi, everyone. Um, as Amanda mentioned, I meant to pass it to you, Rosalie. Oh, <laughs> hi, everyone. First, congratulations on your acceptance. It's very exciting. Um, as Amanda mentioned, I work with her on the transfer admissions team. I'm the associate director of mass transfer admissions. Um, but I also work with students who are just regular transfer students too, coming from four-year schools. Um, so very excited that you're all here. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, so as promised, we have lots of questions that we're going to answer for you. Um, I know a lot of you sent questions in ahead of time. And so we're going to kind of start with some of those because um, a lot of them are very popular questions that I'm sure a lot of you are wondering about anyway. Um, and like I said, please feel free as we go throughout the session. If you have anything that you want answered in real time, um, feel free to use the Q&A. Uh, we're more than happy to answer anything that way. So without further ado, um, we thought we'd start with kind of a fun one. Um, and so this is going to be a question for really all of our students that are here. Um, we're wondering if you can talk to us a little bit about making friends um, and making connections within the UMass Amherst community once you transfer. Uh, yeah, I can kind of start that off. So um, obviously, it's like a little overwhelming uh, coming to UMass just because, you know, it is it is a large school. Um, I came from a pretty small school. Uh, there were like 3,000 students on campus, and then UMass has 23,000 people that are on campus. Uh, so it's definitely a little overwhelming, but, you know, um, just get involved in clubs, put yourself out there. Uh, that's the best way that you're going to meet people on campus. It's going to help you, you know, one, make friends, but then also just like transition easier, um, make a big school like UMass feel a lot smaller. Uh, it's just by, you know, getting involved on campus, forming a lot of different little communities on campus, uh, you know, surrounding yourself with people who have similar interests or who are um, just like similar to you in general. Uh, when I first got here, I tried out for the club tennis team. So I found my, and then obviously didn't make it. So I found like the bad tennis people that I was friends with. Uh, I then also did some stuff with the outing club. So I found people who enjoyed like hiking and being outdoors. Uh, and then I also met people within my uh, my major so I met all I was a math major at first so I met everyone who was like really into math I used to be and then math got really hard so I gave up uh and then I also uh got this job as a tour guide um and then since then I've gotten a couple other jobs so um and I've met a lot of people through the tour guides and uh tour guides as well so really just like whatever you do on campus you will meet people you will make friends uh it's really just about stepping out of your comfort zone um and again it's going to be a little overwhelming but we all had to go through it and uh, you'll thank yourself in the long run uh, if you do, you know, really just put yourself out there right away and start getting involved on campus. Uh, but Mackenzie or Felix, if you guys want to jump in also. Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely echoing what Phil said about getting involved on campus. I think that has been the number one thing for me that has helped me make so many friends. Um, I'm sure you guys are nervous about making friends when you get here, especially as a transfer student. I definitely was very nervous. Um, but if I were to go back, I would have been like, Mackenzie, don't be nervous. Like you will find your people. Um, I joined student government pretty much like as soon as I got here and I made a lot of friends from that. And even um, like living in the dorm, um, I did live in the dorms last year um, when I first transferred and like 
people in the dorms are looking to make friends too. Like, don't forget UMass is a really big school. Um, so that means you're gonna be meeting new people all the time. Like I'm still meeting new people all the time as a junior. Um, so I think living on campus definitely helped me with that a little bit, but getting involved in the clubs, do it. Um, don't be scared. Like there's something for you here. We have over 300 clubs, so definitely get involved. Yeah, I think Phil and Mackenzie really, uh, covered that topic really well. I just have to add on to that as well and say that I met my friends and my close community through clubs and organizations as well. And for me, I transferred during the fall 2020 year, which was during COVID and online. So um, I totally understand where uh, where some of you guys would be worried about making friends and stuff. But I mean, I also had the same issue where I was like, I was at home, I was stuck at home taking online classes. Um, I couldn't meet anyone. So I was mostly worried about that. But even then I was still able to meet with like my dance, my current dance crew now, like on Zoom with like practices and stuff, which is a lot of fun. Um, so I think like when you get on campus, you'll really see, you'll really notice that there's a lot of different types of organizations and clubs that you can be a part of. And I'm sure one of those will definitely stick out to you in terms of interests and yeah, and you can just build your community from there, so. Perfect. Thank you all so much for sharing that. Um, and Mackenzie, I love the whole like looking back. <laughs> if I were to give myself advice, here's what it would be. That's a great way to answer that. Um, all right. So going to another question that some people um, were wondering about is selecting courses um, and a little bit about what that process is like as a new transfer student and just kind of in general. And maybe if anybody has like a favorite course that they wanted to mention um, that they've taken since they've been here. So Phil, I don't know if you want to start maybe. Yeah, uh, so you will uh, schedule courses uh, over the summer with your uh, advisor who you're going to meet eventually once you like become like an official student here and everything. Uh, and then your advisor is going to help you every single semester to schedule classes. Um, you're actually required to meet with your advisor every single semester. You cannot schedule classes without meeting with your advisor. So even for me, I this is my 10th year you know, 10th semester in college, I still had to meet with my advisor uh, to make sure that like, you know, I was going to fulfill all the requirements needed to graduate um, and everything like that for me to, you know, actually schedule classes for this, this semester right now. Um, it was very easy, uh, super easy. If you have any like issues with, you know, classes, not being able to get into classes that you want to get into, uh, you just really reach out to your advisor. Um, then sometimes you can reach out to the professor as well, who's teaching that class and kind of give a little like, reasoning behind like why you need that class for that semester. Uh, it happened once for me, I needed to take Calc 2 before I took Calc 3. So I talked to the professor and she overrode the system and let me into the class. Um, if it's if it's a requirement for your major, they'll all, they'll 99.9% .9 of the time make that exception for you. If you just want to take like a class because it seems fun to take, they won't always let you into the class. It's, so it's really, if, if you need it for your, to graduate, they will make the exception but obviously, if it's not needed for graduation, then it's not guaranteed. Uh, and favorite class I took here, uh, I took it like, I think it was maybe a year ago, year and a half ago. Uh, it was Rethinking United States Environmental Policy. Um, and it was a really just really cool class because it was, you know, things in the, the 70s that we did to start, you know, really like thinking about the environment, protecting the environment, uh, and then kind of ways that we've like, messed up with like uh trying to protect the environment um and like things that we can do in the future to you know pass like you know smart like sustainable policies um we like dove into all of that and everything so that was a really interesting class um but yeah i mean one of many there a lot of the classes are really cool here so uh but i'll pass on to if we want to do maybe favorite class mackenzie i can toss it to you yeah, I really love the classes I've taken at UMass. Um, I've liked a lot of my psychology classes. I'd have to say, um, I remember the other day, I think it was my first semester here, I took a class called personality. Um, and it was all about like different people's personalities. And then we would have to like assess like our own personalities and then like our friends, which is a lot of like those fun quizzes you've probably taken on like BuzzFeed and stuff. Um, that was probably one of my favorite classes. And um, the professor who taught it was awesome. And yeah, I'll pass it over to Felix. Yeah, I'd say one of my, I think my favorite class that I've taken, taken so far was called Epidemic of Loneliness, which kind of sounds depressing, but I, I assure you it was a lot of fun. Um, it essentially dove into social isolation and how that impacts health um, and mental health in particular, and how um, a sense of belonging or a sense of community can really go a long way in terms of helping improve mental health. So I think at the end of that, 
class we had like a like an intergenerational like project where we were paired with a group of elderly um via like north northampton neighbors or like something like that and we essentially did interview projects with them so it was actually really cool we would be able to like meet our like so and so like partner that we were matched up with and we'd like kind of interview each other and just like talk about our life and just like connect and i think that was just a really awesome experience for me and we have a website up for that now so if you ever want to if you're interested in it i think we have a website up for that so you can always look into that but yeah those are all fantastic answers thank you so much um all right so moving on to the next question and kind of i guess the topic of conversation um there were a lot of students that had questions about living on campus what the housing selection process is like um availability for you know living um at umass amherst as a transfer student and so i'm going to toss it over to rosalie um who has some updates um and just kind of some general information about how the housing process works at umass amherst Yes, so we know this is um, wide concern. Um, so residential life has shared with us that they will be able to accommodate transfer students who apply by the housing deadline. And so once you formally enroll at UMass, um, you will apply for housing using the housing preference application, which will be available in your Spire account starting on June 1st through 11.59 p.m. on Friday, July 14th. And all on-time applicants will receive their like room notification um, of their housing assignment and their roommate information on Spire by Monday, August 7th. Perfect. Thank you so much. And we do encourage everyone to, if you have specific questions or concerns about living on campus or anything, um, please feel free to reach out to our residential life office. Um, they're a great resource. And honestly, they're the ones with kind of the most up-to-date information on everything. Um, and so we can uh, give you some information about their contact. Um, but if you want to reach out to them at living at umass.edu with any specific questions, um, they can give you some more information if you have questions or concerns. Um, so we had a couple of questions also, um, about scholarships on campus and what might be available for transfer students. Um, and so Phil, I'm going to see if you can, um, talk to us a little bit about scholarships, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, so there's tons of scholarships available. Uh, I'm going to put in, I have it somewhere here. Okay. I'll put it in eventually, uh, the scholarship search board. Uh, so once you become an official student and then you, uh, take 12 credits, uh, worth of classes at UMass. So typically that's like one semester. Um, then you can start applying for scholarships that are through UMass. Um, I'm just kind of like scrolling through the search board right now and there's like hundreds of hundreds of scholarships that are available. So uh, definitely look into these scholarships. Uh, you know, they're, you're gonna have to fill out an application and you will be, you know, I guess like competing against like all these other, you know, uh, students that are at UMass. Um, but definitely looking at scholarships, you know, college, no matter where you go, it's an investment uh, for the future. Uh, so, you know, you'll you'll thank yourself in the long run. In the long run. Uh, that's like the biggest regret that I have after uh, almost being done with college is not applying to enough scholarships. Um, they're all kind of annoying to fill out. Like no one, no one likes, no one, no one has fun filling out scholarships, but they are very important. They are very helpful. Um, and, you know, they definitely are available for, uh, for all of you guys. Once you, uh, once you take 12 credits worth of classes, then you can start applying for them. Uh, but I'll put the, this link in the chat right now. I can also add to that too and attest to how easy um, applying for scholarships is at uh, UMass Amherst. I actually never applied for scholarships, which I honestly should have done looking back on it, but I went ahead and did that this semester and it was super easy. So we have something called um, Academic Works as well which is something that you can use to apply for scholarships. And it's essentially like one, like one application that you just have to put in. And once you fill out that general application, you will be qualified or you'll be matched to, or automatically like considered for all these different scholarships at UMass. And then once you finish that scholarship application, it'll then like, I think for me, it like posted like five or four or five more like more recommended scholarships that I might be interested in applying to. So then that way I don't have to apply to like hundreds and hundreds, but it's just one simple application. I'll already be considered for a few, like a few hundred. And then if I want to, then I can always um, fill out different applications for other ones. So definitely consider that as well. I'll try and find the link to Academic Works so that you guys can also look into that. 
Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, and again, we do, we are putting some links directly into the um, chat too. So keep an eye on that since there's some really good resources that are going in there. Um, all right. We're going to do a fun question quick because who doesn't love a light fun question? Mackenzie, I'm going to start with you. Um, what is your favorite food at UMass Amherst? And is the food really as good as they say? That's a great question. Um, it definitely depends on the day, but I think my favorite of all time would probably be the chicken teriyaki sushi roll. Um, you can get that at pretty much like any dining hall. Um, and the food really is as good as they say it is. I also love um, People's Markets Everything Bagels. Um, they're from Tandem Bagels, um, which is like right down the road pretty much. So they're very fresh and delicious. Great food here, guys. You're, get excited. Um, I'll toss in my favorite food. Why not? I'm actually, I, I just went to Tandem Bagel this morning and I got seven bagels for me and my roommate for the rest of the week. So uh, it's absolutely delicious and you get to eat those like on campus. So good. A nice Asiago bagel, chive cream cheese. Oh, it's delicious. Um, my favorite food, uh, it's got to be the buffalo chicken wraps from uh, Blue Wall, which is one of the retail dining locations on campus. It's like a big fancy food court you'd find in the mall, but like actually good food. Um, I mean, literally everything is good that you're going to eat here. Um, number one dining in the country, six straight years, Princeton Review. Um, there's also Halloween. We do surf and turf. So everyone gets a big piece of steak and a big lobster on Halloween. Uh, so, you know, not many schools provide steak and lobster for their students. Um, so, you know, if you enjoy steak and lobster, then come here. Uh, also, if you don't like steak or lobster, that's a great way to start making friends, especially around the Halloween time, because you can just offer up your steak and lobster to other people, you know, kind of like entice them to come to dinner with you. I mean, I don't know if that's like bribing or not, but you can you can do it. So, uh, but I'll pass it to Felix. Damn, that was a, that was a really good one. I didn't think of that, but now that you mentioned it, yeah, the steak and lobster here is really good. Um, I'd say my favorite um food here at UMass is the chicken tikka masala. It's a rarity. It doesn't come out often, but when it does, I will literally run. No, it doesn't matter where I am on campus. I will go to that dining hall who that offers that that day for like the dinner or something. I love it. It's so good. Now I'm getting hungry talking about all this food, but that's okay. <laughs> we have some other things to talk about first before we break for, for dinner later. Um, okay, so I have another question um, that I think we'll kind of toss out to the group um, since we've gotten some related questions about it. So um, why don't we, we'll go backwards this time. So Felix, we'll start with you. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about your experiences with um, career services, research opportunities, internships, anything like that that you've experienced so far on campus? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I'd say finding research opportunities is not difficult at all um, at UMass Amherst. Um, it's the career services is really accessible. I know I've met with them at least more than like 10 times, like over the past like year or so, because I've always been wanting to like needing help, like either reading my resume or like reading a cover letter. I always go to them to help them like go um, like pretty much peer review it. Um, and it's really easy to set up an appointment too. Um, we have something called, I think it's Navigate or Handshake. One of the two portals you can use and you can essentially just go in and make an appointment. And if not, if that's too complicated, you can also just email your career services advisor. So every school um, and yeah, every school has a, um, and every major has a uh, career services advisor that's someone that you can go to. So essentially I went to my school of public health and health sciences advisor um, in career advising and was, was able to get a lot of help. So that way they can also um, connect you to any outside resources or outside programs that you might not have been aware of in the first place. So there's always that. And also we have an office called the Office of Undergraduate Research and Studies, um, which is a dedicated office on campus that specializes in helping you find research. So that's how I went about um, trying to find research during my undergraduate years, um, going to the office, talking to them, being like, the, generally in your first meeting, they're going to ask like, oh, what are your interests? So I mentioned like, oh, I'm interested in X, Y, Z. Then they like literally went in next to me um, and searched up the faculty um, that specializes in that. And also like kind of like gave me their email address and their contact and helped me draft an email to them. Um, so that was a lot of help. But generally speaking, I think most UMass Amherst students will get their research opportunities and research, um, yeah, research opportunities by either reaching out to their professors directly. That's how I got my uh, research uh, position right now on campus is I 
literally just walked up to my professor after the first day of class and was like, hey, I noticed that you mentioned that you do uh, this for your research. I'm actually really interested in it. Um, could you tell me a little bit more? So we set up a time to meet. And then from there, we just ends met, like we made our ends meet. And yeah, she offered me a position. So it's really simple, honestly. Um, and if you ever need help with, you know, like I said earlier, with resumes, cover letters, looking them over, helping spice it up a little bit, you can always go to them and they'll help you out for it. So no worries. And I don't know if Phil or Mackenzie wants to add on to that, but you can go ahead. <laughs> um, I personally have not done anything with research. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of echo everything that Felix just said. Um, you can get involved with whatever major you're doing. Uh, every single major here does research. Uh, we are a Carnegie R1 research institution, it's the top tier of schools that get the most funding, third most funded university in the state behind uh, like small schools or relevant schools. You probably never heard of them, uh, MIT and Harvard. Uh, so it's, you know, great company to be with. Uh, a lot of money gets poured into research every year. This past year was $231 million. Uh, so just know that like if you if you want to do research, regardless of whatever you do, you can do research. I have not done research, but <laughs> if you want to, you can do it. <laughs> And because yeah, you're honest, and just definitely echoing what they said. I also haven't done research, but I know most of my professors will say literally on the first day of class, hey, I'm doing research on this if anyone wants to join. Um, so it's very easy and accessible to do so. Perfect. Thank you all so much. Um, all right. So, Phil, I'm going to toss a question to you that kind of encompasses a few different things that people have been asking about. Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about, first of all, what it's like physically getting around on campus um, in terms of like transportation and things like that? Um, also, a little bit further out of like what the surrounding areas are um, and some of the fun towns around. And if you can kind of close out by talking a little bit about just like support services for transfer students and what that looks like. I know it's a loaded question. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so first one, uh, just like getting around campus, uh, super easy to get around. It's a very walkable campus. It is it, it, it is a little large campus, but, um, you know, we, we lay it out really easily. So all your classes are going to be within a 15 minute walking period between class to class. And if you schedule classes back to back, they give you 15 minutes in between. So super easy to get in between classes. Um, if you're you know living on like one side of campus and your class is on like the exact opposite side of campus, if you don't want to make the it's probably like I, I can do it in like 20 minutes. I'm also I'm tall. I walk fast. I got long legs. So I walk fast more, you know, faster than most people. So anyone else is probably like a 25 minute walk. Uh, but we also have the bus system on campus. So it's the PVTA, the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. Uh, it's the Western Mass bus service out here. Uh, it runs as a Western Mass shuttle, but then also as a UMass campus shuttle. So uh, there's tons of buses always just like, you know, doing loops around campus. Uh, it's free for all students. You just hop on and then, you know, two minutes later on the other side of campus, you hop off and then you're good. Uh, a lot of people have bikes, uh, skateboards, uh, those like, you know, one wheelers, uh, electric scooters. There's so many electric scooters on campus, uh, electric bikes. Uh, there's the Valley bikes all across campus, which are like the Pioneer Valley electric bikes. Um, so very, very easy to get across campus and around campus uh, and off, like off campus within the, uh, you know, apartment complexes also. Uh, if you do end up moving off campus, you know, uh, later on, uh, the bus system picks you up at like every single apartment complex off campus and just a lot of like the neighborhood roads. Um, I lived it last year. I lived in just like a neighborhood, like everyone on my street was just like families with kids and everything. And then there was us like college students, but there was a bus stop two houses down from where I lived. So very, very easy to get, you know, off campus, back onto campus. Uh, and then just within the surrounding area, downtown Amherst is a 10 minute walk, maybe, maybe it's like a mile away uh, from like the center of campus. So that's really easy to get to. Uh, Amherst, if you've never been out here before, it's a great college town. It's one of the best college towns in the United States, always ranked in, like, you know, uh, in like the top 10. Um, I've lived out here for three straight years. I've absolutely loved it. It's a beautiful area in the Pioneer Valley, a lot of like great outdoor activities. Uh, Amherst is kind of like a little, it's like your typical like New England quintessential town, uh, but once school is in session, there's like 40,000 college age students that like show up in town because it's not just UMass, there's four other colleges out here as well. Um, Northampton's not too far away, it's more of a built up Amherst, we call it like a city out here, it is not a city, but like it's the most city that's that's out here. Uh, Route 9, that's where all like the commercial stores are. So like that's where, you know, if you got to go grocery shopping or TJ Maxx or Target, Walmart, Marshalls, 
uh, Chipotle, Whole Foods. Uh, they just closed down the Moe's, which I'm very sad about. <laughs> uh, but that's where all that stuff is. Uh, again, that's like a 10, 15 minute bus ride off campus. So very, very easy to get around uh, the area. Uh, there's a Peter Pan bus stop on campus. There's an Amtrak station in Northampton. Uh, so again, super easy to like, you know, be getting to and from campus, but then also just like, uh, you know, within the surrounding area of Amherst. Uh, as far as like support for uh, students go, uh, there is the Transfer Success Seminar, uh, which you guys will be probably receiving emails about, uh, you know, that you can sign up for that in the fall semester. Um, that is it's basically it's a, a seminar to support transfer students. <laughs> uh, one cool thing was it was developed by transfer students. Uh, so people like, you know, myself, Mackenzie and Felix, neither of none of us worked on it. But, you know, it was people like us who actually went through the process of transferring and realized like what helps, uh, what is, you know, not helpful. So we were not going to say that. Um, but that's a, you know, a great resource, uh, on campus. None of us actually were able to take the seminar because we got here before it was developed. Um, I believe, I think at least I did. Uh, so anyways, but very, very cool, uh, you know, option. Uh, there's tons of other resources on campus. Um, you know, I'm going to put in a link for campus pulse, which shows you every single organization we have on campus. And I'm also going to find a link for some other resources as well. Um, there's you uh, there's the student success office which I did know we had a question about uh, someone who was a non-traditional uh, student. So I'm gonna put that link in the chat as well. Um, and you would be able to reach out to student success to see like exactly like what they do provide for um, students who are, you know, of a non-traditional uh, college age. So, um, so yeah, I, 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 think that was, I think that was all the questions that I was supposed to answer. If not, I'll just keep talking. But, you um, did great. I threw a lot at you. <laughs> That's totally fine. Um, all right, thank you. That was a lot of awesome information. So I'm going to throw it over to Rosalie for a second um, because we've had a couple of people asking us about what orientation is like um, for transfer students and if it's done with first year students or if it's different and kind of like what the process is um, and sort of just a general overview of that, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, yeah, so our orientation is separate from trans like transfers have their own kind of orientation process they're all sort of integrated but um so as part of your orientation so first you're going to enroll at UMass then you will be uploading your UCARD photo taking your placement exams and then the first kind of orientation formal thing is the guide to you and that is completed online and it's similar to like an online course where there's different modules about the university and getting familiar with it and then once you complete that, then you will um, sign up for a ready for the U session. And that can either be done in person or online. And these all take place over the summer. Um, and then once you do those steps, then you can sign up for your advising appointment, which will be with an academic advisor. And those will take place online. And you usually register for those through Navigate, um, which is an academic advising system. Thank you so much. Um, and as a quick side note, someone did ask about when um, new students move to campus. Uh, for transfer students, that typically happens um, a few days before classes begin. And so you'll receive much more information about this once it gets a little bit closer. Um, and you can, again, also refer to the Residential Life website because I think they have a lot of those dates up there already now. Um, okay. So I wanted to actually, while we're talking about housing again, um, Mackenzie, I'm going to throw a question your way. Um, and I apologize, it's going to have a couple parts to it again. <laughs> and so can you talk to us a little bit about where on campus transfer students tend to live or like to live? Um, and tell us a little bit about like if transfer students live with other transfer students and kind of like just your general like knowledge and experience about um, living on campus as a transfer student. Yeah, absolutely. Um, living on campus as a transfer student, I had a very positive experience. Um, beginning my sophomore year, I lived in Orchard Hill. Um, and then last semester, I lived in Southwest. So I've really seen like two very different sides of campus. Um, transfer students do have to live with other transfer students. So you cannot live um, on campus with a current UMass student. Um, who you live with has to be a transfer student. So what I did is I joined the UMass Amherst um, Transfer Student Facebook page. I just checked it. It's still around. Um, definitely recommend joining that if you want to live on campus. 
Um, unless you already know a transfer student, that's kind of what I did. I joined the Facebook page and saw a girl from my high school post that she was transferring. Um, so we decided to live together and now we're best friends and we never even talked in high school. So that's really funny. Um, but yeah, if you have the opportunity, I would definitely live on campus. I feel like transfer students and I knew a couple others, they live, um, honestly, wherever you prefer to live. So I was sent um, a form to fill out over the summer of like my housing preferences. So I listed on the different housing options, like one to six or whatever it was. Um, and they gave me my first choice, um, which was great. So really depends on your preferences. Like, you know, we say on tours, it, it really just depends on what you want. Um, people pick different residential areas based off of different interests. Um, maybe if you're an engineering major and you wanna be close to the engineering classes, Northeast is for you, or you wanna be in central campus, central's for you. Like there's a variety of reasons why someone might pick a residential area. Um, I always like to say too, like, you will find your people no matter what residential area you live in. So don't put too much pressure on picking like the perfect residential area. You will make friends regardless. I made friends in both residential areas and I lived on the quietest um, place on campus and like the busiest place on campus. Um, and I found friends in both. Um, so definitely positive experiences. I know we had some people asking about like off campus. Um, the bus goes off campus. I just moved off campus this semester. It's like half a mile away from UMass. There's a lot of great um, options for off-campus living. If that's something that you're interested in too, um, we have like off-campus resources at UMass. Um, I definitely recommend reaching out to them as well. Um, but yeah, lots of options on campus and off-campus if that's something what you want to do. Um, but I would recommend living on campus when you first get here because I made a lot of friends um, living on campus. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Felix, if it's okay, I'm going to toss you a question, um, and then we'll move to another question that I'm going to ask everybody, too. Um, but can you, this is kind of a specific one, but I think it's kind of a cool and unique question. Um, so can you talk a little bit about, like, what the music scene is like, events on campus, like, just kind of things to do and sort of like what the, somebody said the campus pulse that made me think of it, but sort of like what the pulse is like on campus um, in terms of doing things uh, with, like, clubs and orgs and things like that? Yeah, of course. Um, there's a lot going on in terms of the music scene. I know, like, in the next like week or so, I think there's gonna be a big uh, event hosted by um, UPC, which is the University something council. I don't really remember the acronym, but there's a big uh, concert coming up with, that's called the spring concert. And like a ton of guest artists will be coming in and um, performing. And as a UMass student, you generally can get into these concerts for either free or a very, very low fee. Um, I know for example, like last semester, um, there was an artist named Nikki, N-I-K-I. Um, she stopped by UMass Amherst while on her entire like North American tour and tickets were five bucks for UMass Amherst students. So it was like super easy, super relaxed, um, very like lively, I would say. And not even just like guest artists, like even just like regular campus events hosted by RSOs is very common around here. Um, I feel like every other week or something like that, there's always some sort of big event going on hosting, hosted by an event or an RSO. Um, so I think generally, if you are worried about having these opportunities to really like meet other people, meet new people and just like celebrate and have fun, there's always going to be an opportunity like that at around the UMass Amherst campus. So don't worry about that too much. <laughs> awesome. That's always good to hear. <laughs> Um, all right, so I'm going to ask a question of all three of you. Um, Phil, we'll start with you if you don't mind, um, and then we can go to Mackenzie and then Felix. Can you talk a little bit more about what your specific transfer experience was like in terms of, you know, was it challenging? Did it take a mental toll? Um, what was stressful? And again, Mackenzie, I know you talked about like looking back, I would have given myself this advice, like anything like that that you think um, might be helpful for new transfer students to know. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So obviously, like, I, I feel like most people, um, I mean, like a lot of my friends when I first got here were transfer students because I lived in the transfer dorm. So like everyone in the dorm was a brand new transfer student. Um, and we all kind of like bonded over the fact we're like, yeah, we felt like we kind of like messed up with our first choice. Um, and I mean, obviously, like I was like down on myself because like, you know, you see all your friends, like they were all at you know their schools, like living it up and loving life. And I was at home with my parents every single weekend like watching the office, you know, with them. Um, so obviously I was a little like bummed out and like kind of down on myself. But um, then once I got here, I realized that, you know, this was the right decision. And I met, you know, all these really cool people. And I got involved in a ton of like, you know, um, different things on campus, different organizations. Um, so I would just say like, you know, 
don't don't like live in the past too much like look look this is so cheesy look forward to like the future and everything there are there are so many really awesome opportunities at this uh, you know at this school um so I don't know. I guess that, that's probably not the best advice, but um, just get involved. Like if I could go back and like redo, uh, like, you know, when I first transferred here, I would do it. And I would just like go join a new club every single day and figure out like what you like on campus. And if you don't like something, then stop doing it. Like, <laughs> so I, I was a math major. I was bad at math and I didn't like math. So I quit. I just stopped doing math. I played volleyball for a while on the intramurals for intramural volleyball. I was bad at volleyball. didn't love it. So I quit. There's so many other things to do here where like, you know, qu quitting something just because like you don't like it, you're not good at it. Like that's that's OK. That's not the end of the world. Um, and you'll you'll realize that, um, you know, once you spend some time on campus, that there just are so many different things on campus that uh, you can get yourself involved in. Um, but I'll pass it to uh, Mackenzie if you want to answer that question, too. Yeah, you did a great job answering, Phil. Um, definitely as a transfer student, I can relate to some of that. Um, as far as like the mental toll um, being a transfer student took, I think the biggest mental toll was like just the anticipation of being a transfer student. Like once I was here, like immediately, like there's so many fun events that go on, on the in the fall. Like we have an activities expo, um, looking like the first week of school where all the clubs um, are like, you can just go there and talk to people on their executive board um, and how they like the club. And then if you want to get on their email list, you can join that. Um, so there are so many things like right from the beginning of coming to UMass that you're just going to see like, oh, I got an email about this going on. I really want to go to the football game or whatever it is. Um, I know at my previous school, same as Phil, like everyone would go home on the weekend, um, because people would just like, I don't, I don't know. They just went home on the weekend. That's what some schools are like, especially those smaller schools. Um, and it's not like that at UMass. Like a lot of people love to spend the weekends here because they can hang out with their friends or they can go to the spring concert or a football game or whatever it is. Like there's always fun events um, going on and you'll get like emails every week of, about what's going on this weekend. Um, so don't worry about like not knowing what to do. There's gonna be plenty to do. Um, I know it's, yeah, like it's not the best advice to say, don't be nervous. Cause of course you're going to be nervous and that's okay. Um, but just know that like, you will find your people when you get here. Um, I know someone asked in the chat about like, did you miss like your old school or your old friends? And like, you can still keep in touch with those old friends. If you made um, like friends at previous schools, I know I still keep in touch with a couple of them but for the most part, like I'm overjoyed to be at UMass. So it was like the best decision I ever made in my life to go here. Um, like, I am so happy to be here and you guys will too. And I'm very excited for you. Great. Yeah. So I and can pass it to Felix. I'm bad at passing no. it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're all good. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I transferred during the COVID year. So like when everything was online. So I transferred during fall 2020. I was at home. And then spring 2021 came. I was still at home. And then finally, it's kind of crazy to think about last not this past fall, but the year before that in the fall was my first time on campus. And I think even though I transferred during that online year, it just kind of felt like I didn't really transfer it, but it kind of really hit me when I when I came onto campus for the first time. I think I remember like on the drive here, like about like on move-in day, I was like super worried. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like this is such a big school. I'm not really sure what I want to do. Like, I don't know anyone here. What do I do? But I feel like within the first three days I got, I, like as I got here, it just like, that all just went away. Like I met friends. I was able to just like eat to my heart's content at the, like with all these like great dining halls, I was like having a blast. Um, so I would say like not to worry about it too much. And I know we've been talking a lot about um, like getting involved and um, putting yourself out there, but also like one of the big things that I learned over my college uh, like journey is like knowing when to say no and knowing when to like turn things down too because sometimes like your mental health and your just overall like well-being is really important as well and if taking on this additional club or job or whatever is just gonna prevent that from happening then it's perfectly fine to say no you know there's always going to be better opportunities coming later on in the future so I would say not to worry about that too much um and I would also say that everyone's like on their own timeline like I took a gap year before transferring and also I was a completely different major. So to give you a little bit of a background, I was a computer science and game design major um, at a previous school. And then now I'm a public health major and going into a master's in public health. So it's like completely different, like straight up 180 
in the type of field that I'm studying and I was still able to graduate early. So, you know, it's like, it doesn't really matter um, what, like what your past or your journey was like and what it's gonna be in the future. Just focus on what you're at now and just try your best at whatever you're doing. So um, that's like my biggest advice that I feel like I'd tell myself in the past because I know I was so like dwelling on like, oh my God, I'm a failure, but you really aren't. <laughs> Everyone's just figuring out their own path. So don't worry about it. Awesome. Thank you all so much. That was, you're very honest with your answers and I think that's appreciated. So people kind of know what it's what's real about it, you know? So that's awesome. Um, Phil, I have another kind of random question for you um, because we've gotten a, a few questions more specifically about getting around on campus. So would you say it is worth having a bike or car on campus um, and kind of like what the process is if you want to have a car on campus and things like that? Yeah, so I did see that question about having a car. Um, if you're gonna live on campus, you don't really plan on going home very often, which you should not, you should just stay here like every weekend. You really don't need a car. Again, like the bus system is absolutely great out here. Um, I didn't, I've never take, I'd never took public transportation before, before I got to UMass and like, I figured it out in like two days. So if I can do it, like anyone can do it. Um, you like you're not going to be driving from like your dorm to class like that's like basically impossible to do the parking lots are like on the outskirts of campus there's not really any parking in like the core part of campus besides like here or there parking lots um as far as how much it costs per semester uh parking passes can get a little pricey um if you park like right next to your dorm you're probably dropping like 400 if 450 500 bucks do not do that if you park in like lot 12 like super far away uh it's probably gonna be like 200 bucks maybe a semester uh but again if you if you gotta go to your car like there's the bus that brings you to lot 12. um again like can't stress the bus system enough it's great um you can get anywhere off campus for it so you definitely don't need a car uh the only reason i have a car is because um I miss the bus a lot. <laughs> and also I got to go grocery shopping. So I really would like to have a car for that. Um, also I go hiking a lot and like I go kayaking and I want my kayak on my car anyways. Um, but you don't need your car on campus. Oh, and then biking, uh, bring a bike, uh, bring a bike lock though. I feel like that's kind of like self-explanatory, but, uh, some people need to hear that. My brother, he lost five bikes in his college career because he never locked his bike. He did not go to UMass. Uh, he went to a different school where I guess they have a lot of bike thieves. Uh, but definitely, you know, bring a bike lock. Don't be, don't be leaving your bike unlocked. Billy, you could write a book. Let me tell you, you could write a book. Um, Mackenzie, I'm going to throw you kind of a random question that we just got that doesn't hasn't really fit into anything else yet. Um, but is there a family weekend or uh, anything like that for um, for families or friends to come visit students for for a little while? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the fall, we do have like family weekend or parents weekend. Um, I don't know exactly what week it is or weekend it is in the fall, um, but parents and family members do definitely come up for that. Um, fun fact about that is um, on parents weekend, I think it was, yeah, my dad came and that was like one of the only games the football team won for. So maybe you should bring your parents like all the time. Um, and UMass Dining also like caters the football games too. So that's really nice. Um, but yes, we do have a family weekend. Um, and if you're like out of state or far away, we do have the hotel on campus that they could stay at. And there are other hotels in the area. And just something, another thing about transportation, just to add, we do have like a Peter Pan bus that comes um, to campus if you want to go like further away, or if you live further away. Um, I've never had a car on campus and I've gone around just fine. The bus is super reliable around here. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I just found through our chat that um, family weekend for this upcoming year is going to be October 13th through 15th. So mark your calendars. <laughs> um, all right. So we are getting a little short on time. And so I just wanted to ask um, kind of like one final question for each person to answer. Um, maybe we can go Felix and then Phil and then Mackenzie. Um, so I don't know, but I guess we can kind of wrap it up like this. So what's your favorite thing about UMass Amherst? And how did you know that UMass Amherst was the place for you? I hate going first. Um, <laughs> let me try and think. I'd say like um, my favorite thing about UMass is definitely, I think it's like, I would say it's a tie between the people and the food. Um, every single person that I've met 
at UMass has been really friendly and like really like welcoming and like outgoing like I haven't really met anyone that's like really rude like genuinely rude to me um like everyone's super friendly and outgoing I feel like especially when you like join clubs and organizations you like kind of like realize there's so many people that have like similar interests as you and you can connect with them in so many like ways so that's just a lot of fun and also the food I feel like a lot of people like overlook it and might we might sound like a little redundant because we always go crazy about our food here but like it really makes a big difference like especially when you're studying and you're just like really focused on your academics like the last thing you want to worry about is like having to deal with like oh what what am I going to eat next or like am I like eating enough or like like caring about your nutrition like that like that essentially you don't have to worry about at all when you're coming here you just have to go to the dining hall eat, eat good food and then go back to studying or whatever you're doing um so I'd say that was like one of those are like one of the big things that I really love about UMass and I'd say um in terms of why or how I knew that UMass was the uh like the perfect school for me I guess like I guess like for me, it, I didn't know, obviously, I, I just like kind of took a leap of faith. Um, but one of the big things for me was just like affordability, because I have to pay for college on my own. And I know like a lot of people do. Um, and I think UMass was just the most affordable option for me at the time, while also balancing like um, the things that I wanted in a school. For example, I wanted a bigger school so I can meet more people. Um, and also just being in a more like quiet slash rural area whereas but not being like too quiet to the point where like, there's like nothing to do like I feel like UMass is like in Amherst which is kind of like considered a rural area but like because there's so many colleges around the area including UMass and like the four other colleges in the area um, and downtown Amherst is so lively I feel like it doesn't really feel like that at all so I think those are like probably the two big things but yeah I can pass it to Phil yeah um I would say I knew that UMass was the right school for me when uh, I kind of like got onto campus. It was like my third day here just because of the size. Um, like I said like earlier, and again, um, I went to a very, very, very small school and it was way too tiny. It took me like five minutes to walk from one side to the other. Nothing going on. I was there for like two weeks and I felt like I had like experienced everything that like there was to experience at that school uh, versus at UMass. Like I'm, I'm a fifth year student. I've been here for four and a half years. And I'm like still doing new things and I'm still meeting new people and I'm still having like uh, a ton of fun and everything. I'm not, I'm not sick of UMass. And, um, you know, I feel like two weeks into that previous school, I was sick of it. And I, you know, I couldn't envision myself being there for much longer. So um, I think it's just the best thing about UMass besides the food is like the amount of opportunities and the amount of things that you can get involved in. Uh, and I don't know if there's another question. Uh, sorry, I've been like answering these questions. So I've been kind of... <laughs> A little distracted uh but I'm gonna pass it to Mackenzie uh what's your favorite thing yeah I was like nodding to everything that Phil was saying because I felt the same at my previous school as well I feel like my favorite part about UMass is so many things definitely number one is the people um I have like made so many great friends through the different organizations I've um, been a part of and living on campus um definitely the people is number one for me I made a lot of great friends but I feel like overall UMass just checked all the boxes for me um, re really like right away, I felt like very at home here. Um, while it is a big campus, like it, you can always make like a big school, like feel small, but you can't make those small schools feel bigger. Um, that's something that like we try to like say a lot because it's so true. Um, like once you find your little community and you know your way around campus after the first week, it doesn't feel so big anymore. Um, but in the sense it does feel big because there's always different things you're learning about campus or learning about opportunities here. I'm constantly learning about um, the opportunities that we have here, especially becoming a tour guide. I've learned like so much about what we have on campus. Um, the food is great. Um, I love the town of Amherst as well. Um, like not only do we have students here on campus, like on the weekend, but we also have like a great town. You can go explore on the weekend with great food. Um, and yeah, I seriously like the best decision of my life was transferring here. So that should be excited. And it's a great decision to make. Oh, what a good way to wrap everything up. Um, all right, so we have just a couple more pieces of information for all of you that are with us tonight. Um, kind of just some next steps and sort of what's coming up. So I'm gonna pull up one more slide for you. Just give me one moment. Here we go. <laughs> all right, let me open that up for you. All right. 
So um, what we wanted to make sure you knew is kind of what's next? What, what are your next steps now that you have been admitted, you've heard from current transfer students, hopefully you've had all of your answer or your questions answered. Um, so a few things that we wanted to make note of. One is that if you have not already submitted a FAFSA, you still can do that. Um, the March 1st deadline is kind of like the national deadline, um, but you can still apply for financial aid and still receive a financial aid package. Um, and if you have any questions at all about financial aid, please feel free to contact our financial aid office. There are wonderful counselors who can work with you one-on-one -on -one to answer any questions that you have. Um, a few students also were asking about the enrollment deposit deadline. So there's a $500 non-refundable non fee um, to basically save your seat in the incoming fall 2023 class. Um, you can find that page um, to submit the payment and basically say, yes, I'm coming, sign me up um, on your student status page where you found your admit letter. You'll fill out the your decision form and then you can submit the payment from there. Um, new student orientation. Uh, through our new student orientation and transition program is currently open. So if you have deposited already and officially saved your spot, you should be able to go and access the registration form for that. Um, but if you are still waiting to receive a financial aid package or just kind of make your final decision, don't worry, you're not behind with anything. Um, orientation is going to be open for a while still, um, but it is available now if you're interested in starting that process. Um, the housing preference form, uh, so basically applying for housing, opens June 1st um, and will run through mid-July. Um, and again, you'll receive much more information about this once you officially decide to enroll and it gets a little bit closer to doing all these forms and everything. Um, and finally, we always like to remind students that you'll definitely want to make sure that you have a final official transcript sent to us from this current semester. So that way we can evaluate um, your transfer credits for this, uh, for this current semester and award you credit for any courses that we are able to. So don't forget to do that step. And finally, we just want to encourage you to stay connected. Um, here's our contact information. Uh, if you want to reach out to any of us, you can contact the admissions staff. Oh, we moved ahead. Well, hold on, let me go back there. Um, the transfer admissions staff, you can reach us at transfer at admissions.umass.edu. Um, you can reach our tour guides if you'd like to. Um, the contact information is there, but basically we just wanna encourage you to stay connected. Ask us questions if you have any, that's what we're here for. Um, we are more than happy to help you out with all of that. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Um, and one more time, we just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, again, hopefully we answered all of your questions, um, but if you have others, please let us know. We're happy to assist you. Um, congratulations again for being admitted. That's such an awesome, exciting um, thing to celebrate. So be sure you, um, you do celebrate it. Uh, and otherwise, we'll hopefully see you on campus in the fall semester. So thank you all so much for joining us tonight.